you know, I can't tell if it's just me or if it's a placebo effect or what, but something else that um, I remember noticing in the mod release was that the uh, gravity seemed to be really high for some reason, like, take fall damage more easily than you expect to. I'm not sure if that was just me or if it was actually something that was changed. This wall texture is different. If that was actually something that was changed or not, but it felt like that to me at the time. It feels like, well, it feels like quote unquote normal. I have like two now. Oh, bye. Wow, you're still not dead. I'm not sure if that's because I wasn't shooting it in the face or if that was balancing. I think it was both. Oh hey, it's on the ledge here now. Yep, that's balancing. It's so nice to have that HEV suit voice back. Oh, it's on me. It's relevant since playing a Half-Life game. Semi ca oh god. A semi-canon Half-Life game, but a Half-Life game nonetheless. Um, something that I'm pretty sure I complained about while playing Half-Life 2 was I didn't really like the narrative. Um, how to explain it? Like. Okay, I'll start off by saying that I don't, in the time since then, Jesus Christ, I just realized I was only 16 when Black Mesa came out. Um, <laughs> um, what was I going to say again? Right, in the time since that old Half-Life 2 LP, I've been thinking about it, and I played it again, and I really don't dislike Half-Life 2, which... Might sound unbelievable, because from what I recall, I was complaining about it non-stop during the LP. Um, but like, what... The thing is, it does some stuff in different ways than what Half-Life 1 did, and most of the time, I find that I prefer Half-Life 1's approach. What gets me larger? <laughs> I mean, like, one thing is, I kind of, like, 
half-lives. Whoa! Is it supposed to be lit up like this already? I don't think so. Sorry! Um, what was I gonna say? Right. Something I liked about Half-Life... Uh, those are new animations, at least. I think that's the same model. But... And one thing I liked was that... Ouch! 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 Half-Life 1 has a sort of a, wow, what was that? Has sort of a morally gray narrative. I mean, that's the entire reason that questionable ethics is called what it is. Um. Ouch. Whereas in Half-Life 2, the Combine are just sort of pure evil dudes and everything else sucks. Um, so there's that. Um, really though, what I mean when I say narrative is like, how do I explain this well? Um, well one of the things that, obviously the reason Gordon Freeman's a silent protagonist is so the player can sort of self-insert themselves and immerse themselves in the game more. Um, I'm a very inquisitive and curious person. When something catches my attention, I'll probably have like a million questions about it. And, um, the thing is, in Half-Life, like, more often than not, stuff that I would have questions about is either explained by NPCs when they're telling me about it in the first place, or there's something in the level that explains it, or like a sign or something, or um, something else happens that requires my immediate attention so I don't have time to worry about whatever's bugging me. Like um, a, one example is that, ouch, the um, why is this thing solid? The injured security guard in the uh, office in on a rail. He so he sort of says, "Hey, go turn the power on." And I would say, "Okay, why?" But bef but he also explains that train goes right to the surface. So it's like, "Okay, I have my motivation now. I don't. I'm not left wondering why I should be doing this in the first place." Um, like that's a minor example, but that's kind of what. I mean. Nothing else really comes to mind. Actually, the destroy the rocket engine thing's a good one too. Um, the thing is, in half, like a lot of the stuff that I would ask about for my own position in real life would be stuff like what Gordon's job is. But that's stuff that that sort of he already knows, so it's not something for me to really worry about. I don't know how to put it, but um. With Half-Life 2, what bugs me is, like, Gordon's knowledge and the player's knowledge is pretty much the same. They don't know anything about the Combine, it's just some weird thing that's going on. And I mean, okay, on one hand, that's... I can see why that'd be more immersive, because the player has the exact same knowledge as the player character, but what bugs me is, like, every... Well, part, understandably, everyone assumes Gordon already knows what the score is because no one knows that he's been asleep for the past 20 goddamn years. But, um, let's hope the game doesn't crash here like it sometimes did in the mod release. Um, like, if I were in that kind of position, then the moment I showed up on the train to City 17, I'd start asking what the hell is going on to whoever I could find nearby. Like, the guys on the train, I'd probably say, where the hell are we? Where are we going? What's with the clothes? What is going on? What's the date? What happened to Black Mesa? And all these other questions that 
I would not be able to rest until they were answered. But, partially because Gordon's a silent protagonist, you can't ask about that kind of stuff. And everyone else just keeps assuming that you know what's going on, even though you haven't been seen for 20 odd years. Like, Barney just assumes you know what Nova Prospect is, and while you can argue that it's because Gordon's a mute protagonist, as in mute, not just he doesn't speak, but he can't, um, you just, there's no way to say, okay, hold up, someone please explain what's going on here, because Ooh. I understand literally nothing, and oh my god, why is my frame rate dying? What is happening here? Okay, that was weird. Ouch. Um, yeah, well, is that enemy? Yeah, you could say that Gordon was used, so he legitimately can't ask about it, but even then, <laughs> that, I don't know. Because he could still just sort of shrug and, like, make a stop motion or something. I don't know. But it just... It doesn't work for me because I'm the kind of person who can't rest until I understand. I can't really focus on doing something until I understand what's going on, so. I, I just find it takes me out of, the, out of the game a bit because I'm just sitting there going, God damn it, someone explain all of this. Because I don't see why I should do any of what you're telling me to do. Hell, I don't... Metro cops are dicks, but other than that, I don't have a grudge against a combine. Why should I go run around killing them? I don't know anything about them yet. Who's to say they're not really nice people, actually? I mean, obviously they aren't, but that's not the point. Oops, let's try that again. Uh, is that gonna work? I'm gonna assume it did. So I mean it's stuff, it's just sort of stuff like that and it doesn't get explained in a timely enough manner for me. Like. When stuff happens in Half-Life that goes unexplained, usually, or like, doesn't get explained immediately, I mean, sorry. Um, usually, the, ad the question is answered before it has a chance to really, really start bugging me. But, um, more often than not in Half-Life 2, it really just starts driving me crazy before it actually gets answered. Oh god. Wow, that was just Are they supposed to be freezing up like that before they go flying? I'm not sure. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to explain it any better than that, and I really don't think that that is an accurate explanation of it, but like... Oh god. I don't know, I don't dislike Half-Life 2. But just that the way that like one of my problems is when I, is I'll pretty much enjoy any game that I'm playing and I'll start picking it apart after the fact. Like Christ, I have I will readily admit that. Oh right, these guys. I will readily admit that I completely shamelessly have enjoyed Sonic 2006. It's a bad game, but I still had fun with it. I won't try and defend it as not a bad game, because let's face it, it is. I mean, I've said before on some YouTube comments, and I think in some videos, that I don't think it's anywhere near as awful as people say it is, because there were good ideas in it. I just realized how completely off-topic this is. <laughs> But, like, 
no, there's no real defense for it being a good game, because it just isn't one. But, you know, I still had fun with it. I don't... I don't feel that a, pro that a game's quality and its entertainment value are intrinsically the same thing. Like, good games are more often fun, but... Anyways. Um... Like, I'll readily admit to that, but when a game really starts getting under my skin, then, like, every little thing that could possibly bug me will start bugging me. And that's kind of what happens with Half-Life 2 sometimes. Not all the time. Last time I played it, I had a blast. Um, Half-Life 2 update mod came out on Steam a while back. It adds HDR and makes the game look very fancy without making it look like the clusterfuck that cinematic mod is. Um, so, like, don't get me wrong, Half-Life 2 is not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, and I don't dislike it either, but, um, just... The things it does differently to Half-Life... The approach it takes to some things where it's different to Half-Life's approach and Black Mesa's by extension, just doesn't appeal to me as much. It bugs me. Not necessarily a lot, but if it gets under, under my skin enough, then I, I can start bitching about it non-stop. And just sort of how I roll. that on a narrative level. And something else that I think I said at the time was I feel like Half-Life 2's arsenal of weapons isn't really... It's less interesting than Half-Life's because you don't get shit like the Tau Cannon. Or at least you don't carry the Tau Cannon around, rather. Um, but even then, I feel like some of the weapons are just underpowered, like the SMG. Like, Black Mesa here probably has the best SMG out of any Half-Life game. I don't think there's any real argument there. But, um... I just find the SMG... I feel like the SMG in Half-Life 2 is just shooting peas at everyone. And I hate it. The AR-2 is good, but you can carry almost no ammo for it. Same with the Magnum. The crossbow, um... It's not bad, but I don't particularly like it, because I'm not much of a sniper at most of the time, really. Um, I hate... I do not like the grenades most of the time, because you can't cook them, so I find them kind of useless. Um, the rocket launcher, it... I'm pretty sure I complained about it at the time, but it, what drives me nuts is that helicopters take more on any or er, helicopters gunships take more rockets on any difficulty that's not easy than you can carry. I just think that's really dumb. Awesome, this didn't work. The shotgun is easily my favorite weapon in Half-Life 2. Very easily. But even that, like... Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure the lighting is kind of... Anyways, um... The shotgun is good, but I feel it's really dumb that it can only go six rounds at once. And what pisses me off, in fact, I think it might be one of my least favorite things in the whole game oh, I guess it's true. is how combine soldiers and I'll secure this area. rebels with shotguns can fire at semi-auto where you have to pump it. And frickin' combine shotgunners, I don't even know how to express how much I hate them. I just, I really hate them. And more often than not when I get in a fight with one of those, it just ends with me being extremely angry. <laughs> um... 
I could jump down, but I'm playing it safe because I'm boring. Um, I think what else? Well, the gravity gun is cool. That goes without saying. I actually have. Oh, why am I going up? I actually have one of the. Oh god! <laughs> I don't remember that happening. Um, what was I gonna say? Right, I actually have the uh, NECA gravity gun replica sitting up on a shelf here. I really need to find a more permanent place to put this. I have one of the portal gun replicas as well, because I'm a huge nerd. And the Skyhook replica from Bioshock Infinite. 